first attempt at a walk around video to see how this goes. And of course I pick a day where it's over 90 degrees here in South Carolina. Now I understand why some other people out in Arizona record so early in the morning, but this is how we do, this is how we do it. So, so today I wanted to talk about adoption and why you're not going to see it for crypto. Now, I understand that you might say, what? How does that work? And maybe the title's a little quick clickbaity, but it's going to be true. And let me explain it a little bit. When credit cards came out, did we see mass adoption? Kinda, sorta, it took a little while. When we saw it for banking and we saw it for ATMs, it took a little while. What we don't see is like all the stuff that we, we see it, when you see it as a person, you see it mostly as like in the, the person to person, what they call consumer to consumer. But a lot of what the crypto is gonna happen is what we're gonna see is there's, there's gonna be more and more adoption from businesses and in systems behind the scenes. So for example, there's the SWIFT system. And the SWIFT system is banking or essentially transfers between countries or large entities. And you don't see that, like when you go, like back to the credit card thing. When you go and swipe a credit card, man, it's hot. Whew. Uh, <laughs> when you go and swipe a credit card, you don't, uh, you don't know how the system works. You just know you swipe your card, you get the, it says approved, and you get to go your merry way with whatever you just bought. You have no idea what the system is behind the scenes. You don't know how, once that card goes in, you don't know that that box talks to a computer in the back for the point of sale system. And I gotta figure out how that works. There's no recording. Look at that. All right, so I have to work on some editing there. Eh, we'll do it in one take. We're gonna do it live or semi live. So you don't see how the system works behind the scenes. You just know that for all intents and purposes, it all works. And you don't really care about how the underlying system really works. So for new financial systems that work on different levels, like, you know, between businesses, between countries for large-scale adoption for you, you won't see it another example we're talking about like when you when we do when you go and buy your first crypto you're probably going to be out on coinbase or kraken or gemini or whatever app you use hopefully not robin hood but you went go and use like a coinbase and you buy it and then oh my lord Of course my phone goes off all the time when I'm walking around. So, it happens all day long. That's how I remember to do stuff. Otherwise I forget everything. But let's see, where was I? Oh, yeah. So when you have that, when, you do, when you're out in Coinbase, you buy your first Bitcoin, you buy it, hopefully you put it on your own wallet and then you've got it. But when these big boys are going to buy hundreds, thousands of Bitcoin, you're not gonna see that because they're doing what's called an over-the-counter or an OTC exchange. And that's not, that's not gonna be seen on Coinbase activity or Kraken activity because if somebody goes and buy, moves 100 Bitcoin, you're not gonna, it's gonna move the price too much. So they're not gonna do that transaction uh, through an exchange. They're gonna do it in what they call an over-the-counter because they don't want the price to move. So they call up like, uh, I hate to drop Caleb and Brown, but that's what everybody seems to know. But there are just, I'll talk about over the counters another day, but there are hundreds of over the counters. But they call up a, a facility like an, over, like an over the counter, like a Caleb and Brown, and they just say, hey, I want to I want to move 500 Bitcoin. And they get a price, they get a quote. And that quote is basically, okay, that's going to be, let's say Bitcoin today is 50K. They might say, hmm, 55K to move 200 Bitcoin. And like, okay, fine, because they know if they go in onto Coinbase and try and do it, then that price is going to be astronomically moved. And it's probably going to be eighty thousand by the time they're done moving that much Bitcoin. Uh, I think it was uh, Coin Bureau who found a report from Coinbase that said if they move ninety-three million dollars from Bitcoin at once, it's probably going to move it what they call hundred basis points, and that's just fancy financial lingo, which means one percent. A basis point is point zero one percent. That's what the finance industry likes to, they like, every industry likes to make up their own language to make them feel special or whatever. But a basis point is essentially a one hundredth of a percentage 
So 100 basis points is 1%. And yes, that sun is unbelievably hot today. And of course I'm wearing all black, so just stay on brand. So I'm gonna have to start shooting videos either really early or really late if I'm gonna do walk arounds, but I'm starting to understand it. But this has been the nice, nicest day in South Carolina, probably a week. It's been raining nonstop. We had storms come through, but it's pretty nice. But you're not gonna see mass adoption. You're not going to see it, but it's going to happen behind the scenes. Similar to like if the SWIFT system gets replaced with a Bitcoin system, there'll be competing price points between countries and large transactions, you won't see it directly. You'll see indirect evidence. You'll see Walmart hiring a blockchain specialist. You'll see Amazon start talking about blockchain. You're gonna see you're gonna see some news that will be conflicting with other news. Like you'll hear, go back to JP Morgan, horrible, horrible company, but they talk uh, both sides of their mouth and they'll say, you know, Bitcoin is trash, while in the meantime, they're telling their brokers to go buy it. So it's going to happen behind the scenes what I'm, is what I'm telling you. So crypto is, going, is being adopted already for the first time in over the first time. I think since we had the SWIFT system, there's been less U.S. dollars used for international transactions than other currencies, meaning that it used to be always the U.S. dollar because it's the world reserve currency. So all contracts were done in U.S. dollars. That's no longer the case. More than half of the transactions between countries are done in non-US dollars. So as more and more contracts get written in Bitcoin or other currencies, you'll see less and less US dollar and more and more adoption of something else, probably Bitcoin. So we have plenty of adoption ahead, but don't expect it to see the consumer side be the driving force because there's so much more money in the financial sector and the international transaction sector. All right, Cujo's apparently in the back of that house. I'll have to remember that. So, all right, I'm gonna go get out of the sun. That's my video for today. We'll talk more about adoption. We'll talk about basis points and more finance going forward. But that's where I am, Litecoin Leader, signing off.